Hello friends, my name is Kishan and welcome you in this video tutorial. In previous video tutorial, I have shown you how to configure data source on WebLogic Oracle server. Uh, and uh, in this video tutorial, I am going to show you how to make use of that configured data source. Right? So this is the web-based application which I had created uh, to show you uh, how to configure how to configure JDBC connection pool on Tomcat. So same project uh, I am going to deploy on the uh, WebLogic server and we are going to use a data source which we had configured in previous video tutorial. So here uh, only our utility class is going to change which is basically responsible to take connection from the data source uh, using JNDI right. So this is I had written for the uh, Tomcat web server. So when you uh, when you uh, take connection from uh, data source using Tomcat uh, by configuring the JNDI, then we specify the uh, JNDI lookup uh, string like this. But uh, uh, actually, basically, this is the JNDI name and this is the prefix you will have to define when you have a Tomcat environment. But uh, if you are using Oracle Web Logic server then you directly you can specify the JNDI name itself and this JNDI already we had configured in previous video tutorial. If you did not watch my previous tutorial then I request you to go and watch my previous video tutorial there I had shown how to configure JNDI in uh, Oracle uh, WebLogic server. Now that's it and every piece of code will be same. So here basically most of the uh, almost uh, all information about the database we have kept into somewhere in the middleware or the uh, application server right so our code is almost independent independent of the database related code right so only jndi name you need to change and rest of the code will be same so this same project which i had earlier deployed on the tomcat in this video tutorial i am going to deploy on the web logic server and rest of the code will be same right so if you look into the rest of the piece of the code like JSP, right? This JSP basically uh, from this JSP basically this JSP basically used to add new book, right? This is library management application. If you want to add new book, then the user has to click on the add new book. If uh, if you want to list down the all existing book, then we'll have to click on the list all books. So these are the basically url pattern we are sending to the back end and based on the this action url pattern we are performing some action on the controller right if you want to insert some new book right so this will get called with the post method if you want to update the existing book uh, then you will have to click on the uh, like uh, uh, update right so here we have a uh, different I have used JSTL like uh, JSTL tags, right? So this uh, form is basically responsible to add a new book, to edit a new book, or uh, we have another JS JSP form uh, which is basically responsible to display the list of books, and we have another book is called book list dot JSP, and this JSP basically responsible to uh, display the list of books on the UI right and uh, if he, any user wants to edit some existing book uh, data then user can click on the uh, edit button or if you want to uh, user deletes some existing book then user can delete uh, book information and uh, just we are taking extracting the book ID and we are sending as a query parameter when we want to delete we want to edit or delete the uh, book information from the UI. So this is pretty straightforward and uh, and final JSP we have a generic JSP if it's some kind of error is throwing then uh, just uh, we are displaying error on this JSP and uh, if you go to the web.xml web.xml uh, that contains uh, configuration about the servlet right. So servlet and servlet mapping and error page I have defined and uh, First of all, we have a controller when user submits uh, this JSPs, right? These two JSP, then a request goes to the controller. And here, 
uh, from do post I am making call to the do get and here just I am correcting the action uh, action may be a new insert delete edit update and if there is no action is matching then just we are calling list books so this will fetch all list of the books from the database right and we have a different methods right different methods we are, these are the private methods we are calling from the huge cases so switch switch cases we have used and here when we talk about this method like a list of books so basically this is making call to the service layer and uh, which is trying to face the all books from the database and from service layer we are just making call to the doll layer right and in this doll layer basically we are just uh, taking connection from the data source uh, using this utility class and basically this class has been changed here this just we have assigned the another JNDI name which we had configured on the WebLogic server right and uh, once we get the connection then from connection just we are creating the statement and from the statement we are just executing the SQL query by calling the execute query and this will return the result set and just we are iterating the result set we are just fetching value for every row and we are calling the book uh, entity constructor and we are setting these values and we are adding every book in the list and same list is returning to the client so that's all i have a one method is uh, one entity class it's called book which contains fields which is matching with the database table which is in our database jdbc db so so for every column for every property represents one column in the database so here i have declared few constructor which is required for my business logic right and we have a different layer controller then from controller just we are making call to the service layer and from service layer we are making call to the to the doll layer and doll layer interact with the database so this is pretty simple example and now i'm going to deploy this project on the uh wave logic server and uh, i'm going to put a debug point uh, in the utility class i'll see uh, uh, whether we are able to retrieve the data source correctly or not so right click over the project and debug edge and debug on the server i'm going to select and here server is already in debug mode so what i'll do i'll stop the server first of all i'm going to stop the server and once server gets stopped then i'll redeploy the project on the weblogic server weblogic server is stopped now let's redeploy this so i would say debug edge and debug on the server and we have a this oracle server now click on the next 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 and then finally click on the finish and wait for the some time this project is going to deploy on the web logic server now now we have kept the debug point so control will uh, when control will reach here then this will wait for our action So you can see now uh, uh, control research in the controller and uh, let's press F6. Now you can see the action, action is just empty a string. So this will go in the default case and from we are calling list books. So that came into the uh, now doll layer, right? I didn't uh, put debug point in the service layer so directly that came into the uh, doll layer and if you press F6 then we are getting the context now now you can see we are getting as a null so what's the issue let's check out okay so i think this is taking previous deployed jar so what i'll do i'll stop the server so that jar is not updated on the server that's why that is showing me the previous so let's remove this project from the server and let's try to redeploy it 
so what i'll do i'll try to redeploy again debug mode let's try to redeploy it so that is taking that is uh, server is still picking up the old uh, war that's the reason so i'm again try to deploy this one so let's see what happens hello friends i have redeployed the project again and there was some mistake i was giving the i mean jndi name wrong so we had configured jndi with this name so i have corrected this one and uh, now uh, when i redeploy this project then control is waiting over here so press f6 now action is coming with the empty so this will go to the default uh, use cases and then control now control will go to the service layer and from service we are just calling to the doll layer and doll layer trying to get the connection using jndi so now you can see we are getting the uh, i mean data source right that means uh, this jndi lookup was successful and this data source from this data source we are getting the connection successfully now we got the statement and we got the previous statement now try to retry the book information from the database so this will try every row from the database now press f8 to cancel all trips and here you can see we are able to display the result on the ui so this way i mean data source is working right so i un i hope you understood how uh, i mean uh, jdbc connection pool works in the web logic server right So this is the web logic administrator console. So here earlier I had created a data source and same data source I am utilizing in my code. And successfully I am able to uh, uh, retrieve the uh, uh, JNDI, right? And from the, that JNDI, so this JNDI I had created earlier, right? With this name and same I am using in the code, and we are able to retrieve the services right this naming services we are able to retrieve and we had also configured connection port there we had specified a lot of properties like initial capacity maximum capacity minimum capacity etc and how many statement can be cached in the server cache so i hope you understood this example and this code i basically i am going to put on the github actually this code already I kept on the GitHub, but uh, there is little change in the utility class. So here, the only data source I have changed, nothing else. And rest of the code are same. Uh, what we did for the I mean JDBC connection pool uh, when we had implemented for the Tomcat. So same code is there. Only thing is that you need to change this JNDI name, right? So that's it. And uh, our code is almost. Uh, this database independent code right database information we haven't hard coded in the basically source code those information is already uh, mentioned on the uh, application server right and our basically this uh, jndi is having all information about the database right towards the driver name database url username password etc and this jndi is basically using the connection I mean, what is the max mean connection extra? I mean, a lot of attributes, right? Which we have given in the application server itself. So that's the beauty of these things. This is not anymore hard coded in the your application code. So thanks for watching this video. This code I'm going to put on the GitHub. The GitHub location I will specify in the video description itself. To understand this uh, example, uh, I will request you to go and watch my previous video tutorial. There I have explained how to configure data source on the web logic server so thanks for watching this video and see you in next video tutorial